Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a music producer, guitar player, and worship leader here in Phoenix, Arizona. And I was pretty much a day one user of the Strymon Iridium. As soon as that dropped, I ordered one and I've been using it constantly ever since. So there are certain topics that keep coming up in the forums that I'm active in. These are the questions that it seems like everybody asks when they buy an Iridium or if they're thinking about doing so. And I thought I would just do one video and kind of cover some of these. So this is like the Strymon Iridium FAQ, the questions that just keep keep coming up. First off, I want to talk about IRs. If you don't know, IR stands for impulse response, and it's like a captured recording of a certain guitar cabinet. I mean, you can use them for things other than guitar cabinets, the reverbs and things too. But for, for our purposes here, it's basically like swapping out the cabinet on the Iridium. So the amplifier would be the same. Like imagine like the amp head stays the same, but you're swapping in different cabs, basically. It seems like almost instantly after the Iridium came out, people started saying like, oh, it's so great. You should get one immediately change out the stock cabinets. And I was baffled by this because I don't really understand. Like Strymon put the cabs in that they put for a reason, I assume. And so it's it's great that we can change them out and absolutely change them out if you want to. But to me, the immediacy of people being like, buy it and just swap out the, the cabs that it comes with, like instantly do so, betrays kind of like a weird lack of trust in Strymon. And I'm not trying to be a Strymon fanboy, but I'm like, they're the ones who made the unit. So this kind of idea that their ears were to be trusted and they like crafted this amplifier and they knew exactly what they were doing at every level of every component. And then they got to the cabinet and like fell asleep and an intern put these cabs in there or something. Like I, the, the lack of trust for the cabs that it comes with is very strange to me. And the other thing is people keep referring to these as the stock cabs, which they are, they're the ones that come with it, but they are made by like reputable IR manufacturers. The The slot A in each of the amps is an own hammer one, which is like, I've seen people buy the Iridium, be like these stock cabs are terrible and replace them with own hammer ones. And I'm like, that's who made the one you're replacing. Like, and I don't mean this to upset anybody who dislikes the stock cabs and put in different ones or something like that, you're free to do that. But like so many things in the guitar nerd, like internet world, it's taken on kind of a weird mind of its own where people don't even try them first. And they're like, I don't know, I heard they're bad. But anyway, I've been using the stock, the own hammer cab A on the chime model since day one that I got this. Like I, I got it dialed in settings that I liked. Everything I've recorded for the last couple of years has been with this. I, I thought since this is such a hot topic among users of really any amp modeler, I thought I would go ahead and play around with that a little bit. The ones that I bought are by York Audio, which in all my research, they come probably the most highly recommended of anything. And specifically, I bought the Matchless pack because that's kind of a Vox style amp. So it should go with the Chime amp that I primarily use in here. So I've preloaded a couple of the York Audio IRs on here in slots B and C. And then A is still the, the stock own hammer one. And I thought I would just kind of flip back and forth. So I have some gain dialed in. I think the differences between different IRs are especially apparent when you're when you're distorted up. So I'm going to start there. I'll do some other tones later. But this is the stock own hammer cab that comes with the chime. Specifically, it says it's a 2 by 12 AC30 cab that they like snapshotted for this.
Okay, I'm warming up to the York ones a little bit. I, I need to re-EQ the, the amp, I think. But the built-in chime cab has a top end that I sort of like. I like the chiminess of it. It is almost sounding a little fizzy now that I'm A-B-ing back and forth. So... Between the two York ones that I loaded in here, I think I prefer to check my notes. Blend 2 over Blend 11. That's this one. That has a little more top end bite to it. This one sounds really nice, but it's a, it sounds a little more dull compared to when I, with these other two bright models that I've been playing on. The stock cab is nice though. It's almost fizzy sounding compared to the York just now, but it also sounds very immediate and in your face, which I like. Here's with the treble knob on the Iridium turned down a little bit. It's getting kind of flubby on this cab. Turn down the bass a little bit on the on the unit. Okay, starting from the stock cab again. don't particularly care for this York one with my bridge pickup. That's that's very thin and abrasive in the high mids in a way that's like not fun. Oh, I, I so prefer the stock cab with my bridge pickup all gained up. I know my bridge pickup on this guitar sounds kind of thin, so that might be that might be my problem, but something in those mids is sounding like a cheap practice amp to me. That's unfortunate. So maybe that's why I didn't immediately take to these York ones. Last time I tried this is maybe I was trying my bridge pickup. This is the stock. That's sounding better than it did, but it's still got a little bit of like a boss metal zone quality to it. I like it a lot on my neck though. I might prefer the York to the stock cab when I'm in this position. That sounds really nice and full. It's, I don't know why it sounds bad to me on this pickup. Sounds like I have a wah pedal partly cocked or something. Hmm. Inconclusive. It sounds like I prefer a different cab based on which pickup I'm using. Let me switch to like cleaner tones and see what results I get there. So here's the stock chime A. And 
Here's the York. Sounds pretty nice. Turning on some reverb too. That's nice. That sounds nice. Um, trail's still going. Okay, so I like the York on cleans. Uh, again, I'm on the pickup that it agrees with, but I'm noticing when I switch back to the stock cab, there's a lot more sort of high-end distortion and it's adding more grit, maybe not in a good way, to what I'm playing up here. And then when I switch to the York cab, it's like super clean. So here's that again. Stock A. Okay, I think the York is clearly the winner on these like clean parts. It's sounding really precise and crisp and I can hear each note and the other one is kind of breaking up in a weird way that like obscures what I'm playing. So let me try switching amp models because that's one place where I remember being impressed by some of the third party IRs. Because the Iridium stock Fender cab is a little unmemorable. So we're on the round model now, the Fender amp. This is the stock one. This is that same York matchless, which I realize is kind of combining a, an IR with an amp that it doesn't go with. But I actually think even the matchless um, thing sounds better than the stock Fender. Yeah, that's really blah. The York sounds warmer on this and in a good way. And then I'm going to switch to punch. So this is the, the Marshall model in here. And the stock cab that it has says that it's an own hammer, like a four by 12 Marshall cabinet. <laughs> Not as impressed by the matchless cab on this one. Maybe putting a Marshall head with a Vox cab is not the way to go. But I have another one on here. I think this is made by Sewer. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. The guitar company, the fancy guitar company everybody likes. This is like a Sewer Bella cab that a friend of mine sent me. I do remember really liking this one on the Marshall. <laughs> So stock cab again. So I definitely prefer the sewer cab on the Marshall over any of the stock ones. And I definitely prefer almost anything over the stock ones on the round amp. It's only the chime where it's like a close fight. Now I'm curious because the York won two of the three rounds against the stock cab. And then when I switched to my bridge pickup, I hated it. Maybe I need to redial in my drives or something.
So stock, cab, on my bridge pickup. That's a little better. I lowered some tr a lot of treble on my, my Rook overdrive. That sounds pretty good. So I've come around on the York. I'm going to need to keep re-EQing this a little bit, but if you put in the time to kind of readjust your amp settings and your drive settings, maybe there's something to be said for doing a third-party IR. Again, I've gotten by with the stock one for three or four years now, so I wouldn't buy into the hype that you need to do this, but it might be worth exploring if you're kind of bored with your amp sound and you want to mix things up. That being said, I'm switching back to the cab that I know and love for the rest of this, so FYI. <laughs> So the next thing I wanted to talk about just briefly, because I have an entire separate video about this, the second biggest question I see everybody asking in forums is, is it necessary to get like a line isolator versus a DI? And again, I have a whole video about this that goes into this at depth, but I'll just quickly go over it here. Uh, line isolator is like a DI, except it keeps your signal louder. It doesn't drop it down to mic level. If you have an even halfway decent soundboard you're plugging into and an even halfway decent sound person, this should not be a big issue, but there are some slight tonal differences in my experience between the two. So I'll just do that really quick. What I've been playing into this whole time is the Walrus Canvas, which is a line isolator. So that sounds like this. And then I'm going to switch to a normal DI, it's a radial. And the first thing you'll notice, it is so quiet. So that's just a function of the fact that I'm at mic level now and not line level. So let me just compensate over here on the input. Okay, so again, here's the radial now that I just reached over and turned up the input gain. So I do think the canvas sounds a little bit better than the radial. I still don't know if that has anything to do with it being a line isolator or if it's just something about the components in the unit that I like better. But as far as the like, does a line isolator make a difference compared to a, a DI box? I give this one like a tentative thumbs up. It's not a big difference, but I, I have come to prefer the Walrus in pretty much every circumstance. So that's what I'm using now. I wouldn't let the hype really freak you out about this, but if you had to choose between one or the other, it might be worth checking out a line isolator. And then finally, the question that everybody asks when you get an Iridium or any other amp modeler is, do you put your wet effects like before it or after it? In my experience, users seem to be about 50-50 split on this. Some people prefer one, some people prefer the other, but I just want to show you both really quick so you can kind of get a sense of it. There's a good case to be made for why you might put delay and reverb after the amp, especially if you're using the amp to get some of your drive. My Iridium, if I have all my drives off, is set like this. So I'm not using the amp for gain very much. If I was, I think you'd almost certainly want your delay and reverb after it because it would be like having them before your drive pedals or something otherwise. But if you keep your amp pretty clean, here's the difference between having delay ahead of it and delay after it. So here's delay going into the Iridium.
Okay, that took some rerouting. This is now I'm going into the amp, then out of the amp into the delay. So it's it's after the iridium. I'm not hearing as big of a difference as I expected to. The delay repeats stay a little bit crisper this way because they're not hitting the front end of the amp and like breaking up. So you can hear that like trail all the way out. I'm going to put it back really quick. That is not as big of a difference as I thought it was going to be. It probably kind of depends on your rig, but I think the, the repeats are a little bit clearer when it's after the amp, of course. And then when you put it before the amp, the reason a lot of people do this is then the repeats break up a little bit and you get like a little more of that gritty, like, I don't know how to describe it. The repeats wash together with each other a little bit and they're a little bit less separate. It's more like a smear of distorted ambient stuff. Let me put it after the amp again, just for comparison. Okay, so I mean, I can hear the difference. I thought it would be more pronounced than it is. It's It does smear together more when it's ahead of the amp and it's a little bit more separate. Now, it's not a huge difference. And frankly, I like that smeariness of the delays and the reverb kind of getting overdriven as well. So I'm typically a before the amp person, but this is one where there's no right answer. Like whichever one you like better is, is right for you. Anyway, those are the three biggest questions I see everybody ask. Opinions vary, I'm sure, but my personal answers would be don't overthink the IRs thing. Some of them sound better than the stock ones, maybe in certain circumstances, but it's really not worth as much weight as people are giving it. The line isolator versus DI thing, I slightly prefer the line isolator. Again, it's not as big of a deal as people make it, but worth a thought. And then the wet effects before or after is totally just personal preference. I've It seems like about half of the guitarists that I know do it one way and half do it the other way. So there's no right answer in that. Just maybe try them both and see what you like. Anyway, I hope that helps. All of this is broadly applicable to any other amp modeler as well, but the Iridium is the one I happen to use. So three of the top questions about those. Thanks for watching.